And I would like to ask to join me on the panel, Mr. Yorios Yorgandas, Deputy President of the Hellenic Parliament. Mr. Yorgos Hadziosif. I think you know Mr. Yorgandas very well. He comes from this region after all. Mr. Hadziosif is an executive of Costa Navarino, the very well-known Costa Ravanino, part of Messinia that meant um, nothing from a tourist perspective, and look what they have done there now. Mr. Alexandro Stano, she is the executive director of SETE. Please come forward. Mrs. Tonya Fuseki, I would also like to welcome. Who is uh, the uh, CEO of SoFine company and Eleni Sotiriu, the senior consultant of Thessaloniki Convention Bureau. So mainly focusing on uh, convention tourism. And uh, that is the topic of our session also, tourism. But, uh, of course, as mentioned, uh, you don't only need to focus on tourism, you can focus on many other things. But on the other hand, if you have this paradise and you lag behind from a tourism perspective, well, you don't really lag behind, actually. You are uh, running ahead. Let me tell you a story about the issue of uh, public relations. I once asked uh, Abramovich, the well-known Abramovich, you used to be a basketball player. You were a communist in Russia. How ever did you manage to become a billionaire? What did you do? Anna Abramovich said the following. What is the difference between a mouse that we see and we change it, we run, we send the cat after it, we try to poison it, we try to escape from the cat mouse, and and a hammer? A hamster, rather. That we have in a cage, and we love it, and we feed it, and take it to the vet, etc., etc. Well, the difference between the two is this. The hamster is a mouse that has excellent public relation skills. Right? And also add branding, because it's a mouse with branding. That's what we could say. So, Vice President, what about tourism in our region? People need to visit the region, right? Well, let's talk with figures. I think that's important because we have investors here, after all. Tourism in Greece. 22-23, direct uh, economic contribution to the GDP, 11.5 percent in 22, and in 2023, 13 percent. 25 percent in direct contribution in 22, 28 to uh, percent in 23. And let's look at Central Macedonia and Eastern Macedonia Thrace. 11.5 percent and 23 percent to 22-23. We have seven uh, for Central Macedonia in both years and six and five for Eastern Macedonia and Thrace. So we're talking about half the country's average. And we're talking about direct uh, economic contribution because I think with indirect economic contribution, we're even lower. I couldn't have specific details about the two regions. So what does this mean, that there's a road of a lot of road to cover, and I agree with your observation, because we also now know the mistakes of the past uh, that we can pay attention to and we can do things better and more properly. So, do allow me to say something very important in the limited time I have. Tourism is not only a number of overnight stays, hotels, tavernas. We're talking about the indirect also economic contribution, which is 30 plus percent in the country's GDP. So what can we do for that? Starting here in northern Greece, uh, central Macedonia, and eastern Macedonia, Thrace. Well, the benefit from tourism must uh, be disseminated to local business people. And the services connected to tourism, products connected to tourism development, all this should spread and cover the whole region 
so that the region also embraces tourism. Otherwise, we may have a case of some people feeling that they are outsiders, that they see tourism development as something negative that is only benefiting specific business groups. And how can we do that? And uh, let me use your example from Costa Navarino, if you don't mind. What did Costa Navarino do? They applied a policy of buying whichever products are from the primary sector were necessary from its operation from local producers where this was possible. And this makes all local producers willing to participate in the process to support this tourism and business effort. You could do the same here. And the chambers could undertake an initiative and, for example, give awards to local tourism businesses which provenly use raw materials and products from the local primary sector, and not only from the primary sector, but other sectors as well. This is indeed a proposal for the local chambers. We did it at the Ministry of Local Development in the way that we need to do, because, of course, there is a, a certain uh, Uh, level that we can uh, do this because of EU law. But in certain agricultural policy programs, we gave additional bonuses to business people who voluntarily decided that uh, a large number of their products would come from local sources. That's very important to do. And I also heard Mr. Tachiao speaking, who had to leave. It's important to plan projects and infrastructure. But the bureaucratic framework, which uh, we have faced uh, frequently in Greece, needs to be overcome, needs to be tackled. We cannot have the political will in a government to do a project and then have to come up against various objections and appeals and bureaucratic processes that add a lot of time and the added value is lost. People are not able to carry out their projects. Uh, they need to wait for years. So we need to look at the national and EU law and limit these periods because investments are valuable when they happen on time. And one last thing. Everything comes from private initiatives. Today we have an excellent private initiative that local institutional bodies must support. The state must support this initiative. We cannot speak of tourism in northern Greece, in eastern Macedonia, in Thrace, in Macedonia, Kilkis, Kavala, Ceres, without the state supporting such excellent private initiatives that I've heard about. This forum is an excellent first step in this direction, and I'm sure that in the next forum we'll be able to look at all these excellent initiatives. Yes, and I did not exceed my time, I think. Yes, and I didn't have to ring the bell either. Mr. Hadziosi. You are an executive in Costa Navarino. You are in the core of the people who established it. And you, you're still there. Tell us, we can't really transfer this model from one region to the other. Would you think that you could use a similar model? Can this region really take flight? I'm here because I could not not be here. And the reason is Nikos Kortidis and Constantina. I met them three, four years ago. They came to uh, the ex-Hilton, present the Elysian, uh, to meet me. I was really impressed by the passion, by the vision. And uh, a few days later, I came here. I had really underestimated the, the region. I visited it, I had visited it. I was a general director of Porto Caras, which is a resort in Halkidiki, and although it was very close to Kavala, I believe that it was really um, not underdeveloped, not really so good. But when I came here a second time, and uh, Nikos Kutudis and Kostadina showed me the region, apart from the fact that I 
had these two visionaries, these wonderful personalities, but I had uh, this wonderful area before me that I could compare with uh, Tuscany. I will show you where it is. It's uh, in the similar position with the Tuscany, with Sar Sardinia, etc. And I truly believe that we can work miracles here. We have to, but in the right way. And we have to go to the next stage, take it higher, and I'm sure this is going to be a reality in the future. And in the next uh, event, I'm sure we're going to have more uh, guests. I prepared nine slides out of the 51 that uh, I usually show. Uh, we had uh, uh, pres special presentations for students from the University of Athens, Pandio University, who visited Costa Navarino. I chose uh, eight, nine slides from these presentations, which show a different dimension. I will choose to watch them from the large screen. The concept of destination is synonymous to Costa Esmeralda. Why do I say that? Because the first European successful destination, which was developed and was successful, which was in northern Sardinia, a rocky area with small beaches. Is that uh, is that the destination? Let's let's move on. Agahan in uh, 1960 found this area and create a miracle, which is the most concentrated and most expensive destination we have in Europe. We moved forward, you can see the line that connects Sofrinio with Italy, Sardinia, and lower uh, no, southern uh, Barcelona. And what we call northern Greece is not northern Greece, is southeastern Europe. When in Europe they uh, hear the word north, they flee. When they hear the word south, they want to come. The climatic conditions of uh, recent years seem to favor this region. Maybe it's uh, not very favorable in Crete. I think we're very close to Tunisia. Cyprus and the Crete and Crete are very near uh, the line of Africa, the 37th parallel is Costa Navarino, Sicily, and near Libya. When I went to Crete, and I was really a while ago, I was there, and I believe that a large part of Crete was partly destroyed. So here we have a golden opportunity. You're rushing, you're rushing. Tourism is a great opportunity for Greece and a great trap, in my view. It's a great opportunity because today tourism, all forms of tourism, from vans, camper vans, to the restaurants, uh, accommodation, Airbnb, etc., give a huge profit to Greece, which reaches 34% of our GDP. You may correct me, who uh, you're, you're special because um, you're very successful 
uh, is the, the gentleman next to me who is from the Greek uh, Tourism Confederation, but this is true. Tourism and shipping are the two sectors that are approximately 50% of our GDP. This is very good for these two sectors, but for me, who after 42 years in the sector of tourism, I can see the trap. I do not see the cheese, I see the trap. We can't move further in the way that we're moving today unless we have very important rules of sustainability and quality. Why? Because out of this 34% that you see, maybe two out of, or three out of 10 are not profitable. They bring cheap tourism. We have no surplus uh, value for the country and very fast uh, we have to move to that direction. But it's the job of the state very fast to restructure the uh, development in tourism. Let's move on. We talked about Southeastern Europe. But we can see something else here. If we take the vertical axis that crosses the Adriatic, from Finland downward, what is everything that is to the right, on the right is east, everything is on the left is the west, everything on the right of Italy we have 6 billion people, on the left we have 2 billion people. A wonderful book was published that I would advise you to read written by an American, uh, Kaplan, The Revenge of History. In this book, the author describes how history started from China 3,000 years ago. It reached its peak in 2000s, uh, in the beginning of the 21st century in the US, and now history is moving to the East, to the Orient, cultural restructurings. So we should take this very seriously into consideration when structuring and constructing our future. The world is changing. And when we have these changes completed, new poles of attraction and new balances will be created. We cannot ignore that. Let's move on. One of the previous speakers has said something that is uh, not very true. Here is Europe and its vital sea. Everything that is blue is uh, the zone, the economic zone of Europe, and in uh, yellow is it's um, it's the UK that uh, left Europe. In this light, we see the great Greece. Greece is not a small country. Greece, geographically even, is a uh, big country with its economic uh, zone. It's bigger than Germany. The wealth of the sea is very important for the future of humanity. These, of course, are areas of the politicians and the government, how they're going to support and use this wealth so that we can make full use of it. The blue, the light blue that you see is the legal uh, zone of uh, economic zone of Greece. So our country is large. It's not small and its people have a huge cultural tradition and many other uh, gifts and uh, traits. In this slide, you can see an unbelievable number. Greece has one third of the Mediterranean be uh, coastline of um, Europe. 
There are many different approaches. In, you will see from 16,000 to this number, 20,800 kilometers of coastline. This is quite credible because it's from Wikipedia, but I'm not sure. We have one third of the Mediterranean coastline of Europe. This is a huge number. It's a number that shows that we can absorb, easily absorb 50, 60, 60 million if we are organized and if we create the, uh, or, uh, sorry, if we fix our problematic infrastructure. Our infrastructure, despite the, the wonderful efforts of the past 20, 25 years, are not even 50% of what we need. Um, ports, airports, uh, water airports, etc. And the colleague from, from the um, water airports talked about this wonderful plan. I am a witness of the first seaplane that uh, landed in Greece in 2006 from uh, Canada Air Seaplane by a company of uh, Steve Ern. I was uh, then a general director of Porto Cara Caras, uh, landed the first seaplane. Finish. Could you please finish? I have to say what I have to say. Please. So from 2006 to today, we've had no seaplanes. It's really something that we cannot understand. It's related to the state, to private initiative, to infrastructure. I have to move on. What does a destination offer as a, a hub of growth and prosperity, improvement of uh, the life of the people, upgrading of infrastructure, international promotion? employment, extension of the tourism period, tourist season, expansion. It's, uh, it, it, it's really a crime here. The first criminals are the people from Crete who for the past 40 years worked for four months, for six months, for five months. They put the money in the, in the pocket, half of them went to Europe and the US and had fun. Uh, I've lived that. They came one month before uh, they opened uh, their shops or hotels. And they grabbed the money and left. Greece, geographically, is destined to work 12 months. From uh, Alicarnasos to Antalya, we have two small parts of uh, Asia that still keep uh, the Greek names. We have 200 beach hotels, 40 golf courses, 200 football courts and 1,500 tennis courts. And from November to April, they host 3,500 groups of all sports for preparation. You, you cannot believe how many billions flow in Southern Asia Minor. This is Asia Minor, it's not Turkey. We cannot have only one golf course in Crete who say, because of the efforts of a single individual who saved it from destruction. You cannot invest 30, 40, 50, 100 million in a, a, in a hotel that will stay for, open for six months. We are making too many mistakes in this country. It's high time we rationalized our development to the benefit of our citizens, especially our producers. And I would like to finish with uh, production to talk about what 
uh, the minister said earlier. Yes, we did make that effort. I was the head of that effort. I was in Costa Navarino, uh, director for destination. And now I work in Athens for the Elysian ex Hilton. And we create, we, we gathered all the agricultural products in the region. We codified them. We invited all the producers to talk to us. Uh, we uh, united them and we created as many products as they could supply us in competitive prices. They had no mediators. They earned a lot of money and with uh, the support of uh, some locals, we employed citizens of the uh, region. This course started in 2008. We started uh, collecting CVs in May 2010 when we started uh, Costa Navarino. We had 16 people from abroad, Australia, South Africa, to go back to the countries and work there. So we do have practices about how we should move forward. It's up to us to do things better for the future. Thank you very much. Ο κύριος Θάνος, από το ΣΕΤΕ. Μητας Θάνος, from the Greek Tourism Confederation. Good evening, everyone. I am delighted to be here. I was a deputy regional governor of tourism and culture, and I came here eight years ago uh, with Mrs. Peristaeri, who uh, had knocked on the door of the region of Central Macedonia and uh, Mr. Tizikostas through her visionary mind in order to begin with this wonderful uh, discovery of Casta presented to us by Mr. Haziz. And I never expected that such a forum could uh, be a reality, uh, such a significant event for this region. So I'd like to warmly congratulate you, Mr. Kurtidis, and congratulate all those who have contributed so that we could speak of this region of Amphipolis tonight. Of course, as you said, tourism is a blessing. It does not only give 30% of the GDP, but it creates those conditions of extroversion that uh, may affect the GDP even more. This 28 billion uh, with regard to the direct uh, uh, contribution of tourism may be much more if we add uh, the multiplier of the economy and the overall management of tourism with regard to extroversion and all the productive forces, uh, manufacturing, uh, agricultural production, all these sectors are a key to the tourism development. On the other hand, tourism is not an answer to all and not a panacea. Uh, the seasonal nature of tourism in Greece uh, nowadays, as Mr. Khatiosif, uh, can be uh, isolated to three regions of Greece, five months a year, where 90% of the tourism revenue comes from. Five regions out of the 13, five um, months out of 12. And that's why when we often hear about uh, over-tourism uh, here at the Greek uh, Tourism Confederation, we choose uh, to speak about a spatial and temporal concentration of tourism that may cause problems but requires rational management. You spoke about underdevelopment and developing regions, uh, talking about the broader region of Amphipolis, uh, which we have delineated at this forum, starting from Thasos and uh, uh, reaching Thessaloniki. But I would like to also add the third uh, finger of Chalkidiki. Uh, uh, this is also a broader part of this region. And this is still under development. And since the new special plan for tourism has finally been put to consultation, which needs to be part of the reform agenda of this government, and it seems uh, that from very early on, uh, from the words of Mrs. Kapalogiani, the minister, that it has already been put to consultation with the relevant bodies, uh, that it will help with regard to what we call sustainability. And this is not simply a word uh, that is a trend uh, Nowadays, it is very important. Right now, 
If we don't manage to keep our competitiveness high, because you know that tourism development is not a predefined success. It is something that we were looking for in the previous years. We have managed to achieve this, but if we don't safeguard it with quality terms, then we will risk losing it. Okay, well, last night I uh, took a walk uh, along the coast, uh, and uh, I noticed that along this beautiful uh, uh, long coast, there was no organized parking. Thousands of cars, people going in and out, trying to get through. Yes, sustainability is a key word, but what about this field in front of your shop? Why don't you fix it up so that it looks a bit um, more attractive, so that it is a bit more functional? Well, in all uh, tourism organizations, there is the term DMOs, the Destination Management Organizations. We, uh, who used to work in local authorities, uh, used to look for promotion in the past, but now uh, what is of interest to us is the tourist management uh, and quality services and entrepreneurship. Natural and cultural resources uh, we have in abundance. Uh, and congratulations, uh, Mr. Cortidis, for the brand name The Great, because it goes hand in hand with the slogan uh, for tourism in Central Macedonia, which is do something great. That is the way that um, Alexander the Great followed on his campaign to Asia and the steps of uh, Apostle Paul. But what's going to make the difference uh, right here, right now, are the people at the end of the day. And the question of staffing actually is the hardest problem that such a strategic investment will have to face. Thank you very much. Mrs. Tanya Fuseki, representing So Fine, you have the word. Let me say a few words about So Fine. First of all, it is a branding company and a communications company. And within this framework, we do branding uh, for companies, hotels, destinations, uh, and 360 communication. I would like to congratulate Mr. Kurtidis and Kurtidis Group, uh, along with Mrs. Kostandina Dimitrova, for undertaking this initiative, as well as the municipality of Amphipoli. This is indeed an excellent initiative, and congratulations for that. I know that you were able to organize this forum in a very quick period, and you have done so impeccably. And I do hope that this institution will continue each year and that you will set an example for the whole of Greece, because indeed your initiative is very important indeed, and what we are discussing today is very significant too. So we are involved in branding. We. Uh, approved uh, by international uh, companies also for our work. So what about the branding of this region? We do branding for hotels around the world, and that's why Mr. Kurtidis also invited us to do the branding in this uh, wonderful project that he is embarking on. And we saw the logo a few minutes ago, inspired by Alexander the Great. When I visited this region first time, I was truly impressed by the authenticity of this destination. Secondly, by the complexity of its natural beauty. And truly, its history and cultural heritage blew me away. As Mr. Gulega said, coming to this region, you really feel the culture and the history. And I was inspired by the vision and the passion of the Cortidis group because these people actually work miracles and they inspired us to work on this project. So what we try to do is to build a destination. We saw this uh, small gem in the region which has not been discovered yet. And that's why we need to shed light on it, we believe, and create a destination here. How? Well, as the Deputy Minister said in the previous panel, we need to create a myth. And that's what we want to do, and we're inspired to build this project based on the local characteristics, its beauty, its cultural heritage, its history, Alexander the Great, its wineries, its religious tourism. 
There are many, many assets uh, that this land has to offer. And we want to create its myth. Did you know, for example, that place names in the past uh, were based on the weapons used by Alexander the Great? Uh, for example, uh, Ofrinio used to have the name Sariza because uh, that was the weapon that they used in the Macedonian phalanx. Or do you know that this is a region whose cultural heritage is recognized by UNESCO since uh, there are many civilizations that have crossed these uh, paths? So this is what precisely we wanted to highlight, the local identity, the beauty of this region, to strengthen also its image and tell its stories. We wanted to create an attractive narrative for the hotel and for the region as a whole because these are interrelated. The land is provided for the hotel and the hotel vice versa. When will the first campaign be launched? Well, you'll have to ask Mr. Kurtidis. I think you need to make haste. And this campaign can also establish the branding of the destination we want to create. This project will definitely upgrade the local area and make it an attractive destination to visitors and investors as well. Thank you very much. Mr. Lenny Sotiriu, who is the senior consultant of the Saloniki Convention Bureau. When we have, for example, a number of doctors coming together, not just that. No. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for the invitation. What we have uh, heard and seen here were really very important. The Convention Bureau of the Saloniki are one of the two convention bureaus in Greece. The other is uh, in Athens, and uh, these are uh, agencies for the uh, attraction of uh, convention tourism. And this is a type of tourism that is very profitable, and there are many different uh, parallel activities, all business, uh, uh, travels, corporate and incentive uh, trips, and all uh, large organizations and events. As I said, uh, there are two agencies, but our agency has very close cooperation with the region of Central Macedonia when uh, Mr. Panos was the vice uh, governor for uh, tourism because uh, the area where the, these very large events are held contributes uh, with its own uh, supplementary activities which are necessary for visitors. So we had the 60-minute trial where people can uh, which people can visit and in a single day they can have a supplementary activity in their business activity for example what I would like to contribute to this discussion and we heard quite a lot about the extension of the uh, tourist season which is very important and uh, business uh, travel is very important uh, for this extension and also the dissemination uh, to a broader sector of uh, business people and uh, employees. And the region here has all the characteristics that can uh, allow it to expand beyond uh, the sun and sea traditional model. We have among, uh, we uh, are one hour by car from uh, main airport, uh, that's not uh, too far. It, it would take one hour for you to go from Milan uh, downtown to its airport and the same for London and Heathrow. So this is uh, very important. We have so many different activities, wineries, archaeological sites, natural beauties. It's, it has all the necessary characteristics that can allow it to expand to a different tourist product. And since we are at the stage of branding and uh, uh, creating an, uh, a different product, we should take that into consideration to give it a different dimension and help the entire region. So it's not just uh, doctors uh, and uh, trips. What I'm saying is that 
for a business trip to be organized, a conference apart from an amphitheater, for accommodation, for suites, uh, for uh, CEOs and uh, other type of accommodation. We must have things to do. That's why um, I talk about that there are many airports and a lot of accommodation that is much better elsewhere. But the difference is in the other activities that the region has to offer, its unique traits and the fact that since we have a saturation in uh, business uh, trips, organizers try to find uh, alternative destinations. We've all made business trips to Lisbon, Barcelona, uh, Paris and London. We have the same destinations in the past decade. So people are looking for alternative destinations and delegates would be much more willing to go to different places. And let me add that experience is an alternative, you see, the comparative advantage. That's what we do in branding. We should give experience and experience comes with local products and supplementary activities. Thank you very much. We're not going to have a second round. We don't have the time for that. Please stand up so that we hand you your gifts. Um, the Mr. Carlos Sechab from uh, the Gurdidis group will give, uh, will hand uh, the gifts to all the participants. And a family photo. Thank you very much. Mr. Yorgandas, thank you very much for coming here. Mr. Hadzi Yosif, uh, Ms. Fuseki, Ms. Soteri, thank you very much. A very good friend here, a distinguished journalist, Mr. Athanasius Ellis, you know him. Let's give him an applause. Thanasius, we've worked together, that's why you see us so uh, familiar with one another. He's going to be the moderator of the next panel. And he's uh, lived in the U.S. for many years, so he knows Greek Americans. He's also a journalist and chief editor of Kathmerni English Edition. And he's going to tell us a few things about uh, investment of Greek Americans in the region. A myth or a reality? Mr. Thanasio said this. I'm going to be very brief because I'm going to be very brief because it's getting late. Uh, I was asked to share with you some thoughts of mine because I have indeed uh, spent most of my life in the U.S. I um, still have a flat in Washington and keep coming and going. And I only arrived three days ago. I haven't been involved in the business sector. I mainly work in geopolitical issues, the relationship between the U.S. and Greece, the role of the U.S., good or bad for our region, Grip secret relations, etc. However, since uh, Greek Americans are uh, a group uh, that always play an important financial role and uh, there are many prospects to be valorized, I'd like to share my thoughts with you. To approach Greek Americans, you need people who know them well because uh, personal touch is always important uh, for them. It facilitates the whole process. The product sells itself. Amphipolis sells itself, we could say. What is also selling well is the local geography, the map showing that it is close to the other Balkan capital cities and countries. 
And this is an argument that we often use geopolitically with American diplomats, uh, saying that uh, compared to Turkey, we may be a small country of 10 million, but we are a route to the Balkans and Europe. And we are the superpower of an area of uh, 60, 70, 80 million. And that's something that the investor takes into account seriously. Greek Americans, uh, from what I know of them, will not come, fortunately or unfortunately, to invest in their own country for the good of the country. They will do so to make money. So very often, wrongly in our mind, we think they are locals. Why not come? They will come only if they know that they have the same possibility of making money, and instead of going to Budapest or elsewhere, they'll go to Peloponnese or Amphipolis. They won't come simply to help the country, apart maybe from some humanitarian acts to help with the hospital ambulances or whatever. They will make an investment here based purely on business criteria. We often also say that we are people, a country with a high taxation. Yes, partly we are. But speaking to investors on a friendly level, I'm not involved in business journalism, but with people I talk to in journalism in, in um, New York and Washington, well, all uh, business people would like zero taxation, okay. But the main counter incentive is the absurd constant change of laws and the lack of stability. And I often hear people who are managing a lot of million say, I'm not so important, so interested in a higher tax of one or two or three percent. But if it's 3% more than what I want, okay, I can manage it. I will make it part of my strategic plan, okay. But what I cannot manage, and this is what foreigners often say and the Greek Americans say, is the change in taxation policies and other procedures. An investor comes, they make a long-term plan, and suddenly in the second, third year, or retrospectively in many cases, justifiably so or not, even if the measure is just, is correct, a person thinks I'm going to do this in 10, 15 years. The tax go is higher, okay, I'll plan for it. But if the government changes or things change in three or four years, then this subverts the whole investment. And that is a fear they have in mind. Change of government is one fear. Second mistake that politicians make. They all want to win the elections. They all want to bring investions, investments. OK, I understand that. But the main problem they do, all governments do, is that they sell, they promote their own government and say that we are a government that will promote investment. If we win, we will do that, we will do that. But investors are not interested in ideologies. They want a long-term plan. So the best argument from a government, from today's government, let's say, and I saw that before the national elections where they were saying we are a pro-investor government and if we come out are put are in office, you have no fear. Well, investors, when they hear Politicians who are now in government say that, well, if the other party comes in power, I don't know what will happen. Well, then investors won't come. So then this government will lose out as well. If they, then what they need to say is that whoever is in power on a regional basis, on a governmental level, etc., don't worry, the country is on the right route. And even if you speak positively of your political opponents, that will be for your benefit because investors will hear you and come and invest on a long-term basis. And if you remain in government and you stay in government, then you will be able to be credited with the whole procedure of this investment initiative. 
I have often been to conferences with Greeks of the diaspora. And I think it would be useful, although we don't yet have the infrastructure in other regions around here, some steps for such conferences are being organized. Thessaloniki is a bit far from this, but if you can bring here during the conference, you'll see that Amphipolis can sell itself with a Greek-centered focus. A lot of people come to Greece for the Acropolis. The Cypriots from the diaspora go to Cyprus each year. The Ahepans were here last year, so there are many Greek-American organizations, not necessarily a conference, but groups of two, three thousand of people who can bring many resources to the region. And then this leaves a footprint, a mark on the region, and they tell others, and others come too. This happens with uh, people from many countries, not only the Greek Americans that I know about. Also, their children, they try to find ways to connect regions with interests, with issues of interest to their children, such as Greek history. And Fipolis can solve itself with that as well. So I don't know whether this can be through conferences or events connected to sports also that could attract the children of Greek Americans through their schools, students. For example, in Athens, we had at Didi College 100 people visiting, 100 kids. Sarbanis was there, and the young kids were there from America who had a wonderful time, wanted to come back. And then, of course, they'll tell their friends, and they'll come in groups. And one thing leads to another. Greek kids will stay. Foreigners may go to one country one year and to another the next year, but Greeks have an added incentive to come again and again. It just needs proper planning. I also heard that there was a direct contact uh, with New York. Well, interpersonal relationships are very important for Greek Americans. It's good to be organized, to show them slides, and give them books, and uh, promote everything online, but an interpersonal relationship is something totally different for Greek Americans because they have an additional sensitivity for Greece. So whether it's Cortidis group or the region or the combination of the regions, uh, often we see that municipalities do not collaborate, but in this case we see exactly the opposite and the state support also, and private initiative. So there could be a procedure put in place that could regularly send a small group in a targeted manner, mainly to New York, but also to Chicago, where there is intense activity. And actually, nowadays, one of our most dynamic uh, Greek Americans uh, is from Chicago, and he brings groups of young people to Greece each year. Sometimes we think U.S. is New York. No, there are other places as well, and Canada. So maybe there could be an annual or a more regular group of uh, two or three people who know the subject very well, who know the local people there very well, and can work on a promotion on a personal level. But also, they need to pay attention because uh, sometimes we have people who have ulterior motives. Not everybody is a pure professional. In many cases, they may apply pressure on governments, on people in order to uh, get a project simply because they know how things work and they put pressure on the government to undertake the project. So in this case, we need to be a bit skeptical with regard to Greek Americans on certain occasions because we may fall into traps. They're not all the same. Most of them, middle-sized businessmen also, are not interested in doing things under the table, which seems to be the rule in our country. I uh, knew a man in America, for example, who 
was asked to join an SRF project, and we will also enter the project. Uh, but he decided not to invest because uh, he felt bad. Uh, he felt that uh, things were doing being done in an underhand way. So we need to give incentives. We need a personal relationship. He is a businessman, after all, not an angel. But this excessive uh, willingness to do things under the table for most Greek Americans is not as effective as it may have been if we were talking about Greeks living in Greece. Things are different there. They also have an element of naivete. I wanted to say much more, but somebody's uh, telling me that I need to uh, finish. I hope I shed some light on these issues. And now I think it's time for the third and final session before we conclude. Thank you very much, Mr. Ellis. A few years ago, these investments, hearing about investments from by Greek Americans in uh, our region, may sound like a joke, but today it seems to be a reality, and you seem to confirm this. As long as we have the quality characteristics that can invite, attract even the most difficult investors, yes, and this is a much lower cost compared to other regions, because the region has not yet fully developed, so now is the time to come. Thank you very much indeed. Now I would like to ask the Deputy President, who is very fond of the U.S. and participates in these missions, to hand Mr. Ellis our souvenir gift. Thank you.